What's up guys, it's Josh from Soul Studios. I'm back today with the review of the Chandler RS124 compressor. This is a very moo compressor and it's been often called the Beatles sound because it was developed at Abbey Road. And I'm gonna read a bit from the manual to give you the backstory before we get into the sound examples here. First designed in 1960 by Abbey Road head of technical Bill Livy, deputy head Lynn Page, and seasoned EMI audio designer Mike Batchelor. The EMI RS124 compressor is one of the most coveted pieces of recording gear ever developed. During the late 1950s, EMI acquired Alltech 436B compressors and soon realized the units were insufficient for critical recording applications. Livy Page and Bachelor worked to modify the Altex to meet their standards and ultimately ended up designing an entirely new compressor in the process. The RS-124 was popular with Abbey Road Studios engineers. The RS-124 added its unique character to single instruments, rhythm buses, and entire mixes. So integral to the recording, mixing, and mastering process, a pair can be seen in almost every control room photo in Abbey Road during the 60s period. Still in use today at Abbey Road Studios and most recognized for its use at virtually every Beatles session, the RS-124's true inner workings have remained an enigma until now. And part of the reason is that this was never a mass-produced, publicly available compressor. This was one of Abbey Road's secret weapons that they took the Altec, made it into something entirely new and used it to their advantage for decades before the rest of us even got news that there was such a thing. Now, I had kind of an odd introduction to the RS-124 compressor, and some of you guys watching this may have a similar story. My first experience comes with the first plug-in set that came out in 2010. And I must admit, when I first tried it, I didn't think I was gonna buy it during the demo period. And the reason being, it didn't react like any other compressor that I was used to, even though it was a plug-in. It took me a while to get used to it, but once I did, I quickly realized that this was actually not only something I was gonna buy, it was quickly becoming my favorite compressor. And that's true to this day. If you were to tell me you can only have one compressor, this is gonna be really high up the list, if not the number one compressor I'm gonna pick. And the reason being is that the tone, once you learn how to work with the slower attack and the slower release time, the tone is such a beautiful, glue and a hug. I mean, it's everything when we talk about great compressors and we use these words to try to describe glue and you know, those sorts of things. It is probably the most ideal sound of compression, that, at least in my mind. But I just love the sound of a good tube very mood compressor. Now the three tubes used in the RS-124 are the 6BC8, 6CG7, and the 6AL5. I wanted to point out the three attack times marked in red, the 670B, the 650A, and the 61010B are the attack times of the original Abbey Road units. So those three units had their own distinct character. They had fixed attack times, and the Abbey Road engineers tended to have a favorite that they would pull from, and they would just know which serial number to ask for. Now you'll also see some red dots around the release, and those are the hold feature. Sometimes when you first try out an RS-124 and you turn on the hold, you're like, what's going on here? I'm not sure. But basically, the original intention was when they were mastering, because the RS-124 has a slower attack, sometimes the beginning of a song would really peak before the compressor could grab it. You would go to the loudest part of the song and prime it with the hold feature so that it may already be sitting on whatever level of gain reduction you wanted so that when the song started, there wasn't such a big difference. Also from the manual here, another use of the whole facility was to prevent level inrush when there was a precipitous drop in level during quite passages of a track below the compression threshold. So here again, the engineers would switch the recovery control to the nearest hold position until the quiet passage had passed before setting it back to the previous release value. And it's fun, once you have one of these and you get used to using it, being able to switch to hold and then back to whatever release time you were on, it can become quite a creative tool and something fun to play with. Now, one quick note before we get into it, you're gonna notice that my VU meter is not resting on zero. That's completely normal. The RS-124 has an unregulated power supply just like the originals. And because of that, depending on the voltage of where you live, 
your meter may rest a little high or low, completely normal, nothing to worry about there. One other feature I wanted to show you is that you shouldn't have to do it often, but if you do swap out your tubes, you're gonna to want to rebalance those. And you'll see this balance button on the left side of the unit. And when you press that in, let me see if I can actually show you that sound to give you an idea of what it's like. Okay. Okay, it almost sounds like a cat purring. So what you're gonna do as you're pushing that balance in, you're gonna take your screwdriver up here and adjust that screw above. And you're not gonna get it to completely cancel out, but what you want is the least amount of sound. And that's gonna let you know when your tubes are calibrated properly. So let's give it a shot here right now, just to make sure before we dive into the examples that our RS124 is in tip top shape. So let's check it out. So you can hear somewhere in there is pretty much canceled out. You can barely hear it. So, all right, we're in good shape. We're gonna take one of my good friends, Joey Barnes song today called If This Is Love. This is off of his double album, Introspect, A Dance Where Worlds Collide. I thought this would be a great track. We're gonna start with the piano. And unfortunately, I only have one RS-124, so I'm gonna have to compress the stereo piano one side at a time. So we're gonna start out compressing the piano and then we'll move to the vocal and acoustic, bass, drums, everywhere that I like to use an RS-124. We're gonna build out this song and just get that beautiful tone, that beautiful glue, and see if we can incorporate a little Beatles sound to a modern track here. All right, here we go. All right, let's add in the RS-124 and start working on the compression here. Now, what you're gonna notice, and I first developed this approach with the original plugin, when you're hitting like two to five dB, that's a really magical spot where on a lot of compressors, you're like, I don't even hear anything yet. So I will push it further on certain things, but just know the reason that I'm doing this is because that is where you already start to get some of the beautiful top end sheen and the tone that the RS-124 delivers, but you're not over compressing. And one of the best parts about this compressor is even that when you do compress heavily, it doesn't sound like it. It's an odd thing. It's like, this is controlled. It's, it's bringing out the sustain and maybe the room of the track. I love how it sounds, but it, it's not pumping. It doesn't sound harsh. So anyway, I like that. Let's commit this one and then we will move on and do the same on the other piano track. And then from here on out, it should be, we should be dealing with mono tracks. All right, let's go ahead and bring the lead vocal in with the piano and see what we like for vocal. And this is gonna be the first chance to experiment with the superfuse mode, which I don't think has ever been fully explained exactly what's going on. I've heard that maybe it ties the release time to the attack. And the way you do it is just by twisting the fuse knob there and you'll know it's on by the brighter light indicator. But this was something in the original plugin set that was really popular that was not on the original hardware unit. So it's kind of interesting that we're in an era where an idea and a plugin could influence hardware. I guess the easiest way to describe it is it's a more aggressive sound. So let's add the vocal in here and see what we like. I woke up alone, but I didn't care. 
Life I once knew was going nowhere, and this truth for me is something new. Yes, I believe, just not in you. All my sins and secrets deep, I held my tongue. Cause I was weak Are you still there? If this is love Then please tell me so Cause I just found out What I don't wanna know And it's making me sound crazy but if this is love, I'm letting go. If this is love. Now, I mentioned before the attack is slower than most compressors you're used to, but there are a couple of attack settings that have been added to the Chandler that are faster than the fastest model of the originals, which is nice. So especially once we get into the chorus here, you know, it's quite a bit more dynamic than the verse is. I'm gonna try a setting that I often like, which is the fastest attack. And I'll start with the very slowest release and start to work my way back towards faster there. So let's try that out and see what we get. I woke up alone, but I didn't care. The life I once knew was going nowhere. Something new Yes, I believe Just not in you All my sins And secrets deep I held my tongue Cause I was weak Are you still there? If this is love, then please tell me so Cause I just found out what I don't want to know And it's making me sound crazy But if this is love, I'm letting go If this is love so on the second line of the chorus there, please tell me so, the so before was, you know, peaking a little bit more than you'd probably want. But even though this is in general a slower compressor, I've found that when you set it to the fastest attack, that that combo of the fastest attack and one of the slower release times, usually I'm either at slowest or coming towards the fastest somewhere around four, it will keep it within that range to where you don't have some of the peak problems you might have at other settings. So, And what I love is that it just takes a vocal and makes it sound so interesting, especially in a song like this where you're singing quieter in the beginning and you're telling a story, and man, it just can take a vocal and just make you engaged as a listener. That's probably the biggest compliment I can give the RS-124 is that when I put it on a vocal, oftentimes an uninteresting vocal becomes interesting to me. So let's commit that and then we'll move along. All right, I'm back to work on bass and acoustic guitar and finish up the song here. Had to go help my son defeat a level on Luigi's Mansion 3, so couldn't finish last night. But back again today, we're gonna finish using the RS-124 on this song and just show you on a couple more sources before we wrap things up here. So let's check it out on acoustic guitar. First, we're going to hear the dry acoustic. All right, let's add in the compressor and see what we like here.
I like where that's sitting and we have stereo tracked acoustic here, a duplicate take. So I'm just going to apply the same processing to both and then we'll check out bass. Okay, let's check out bass now. And this will probably be the last instrument I use the RS-124 on. But just know that I could literally use it on everything and, and find a setting that I would probably like. So let's check out bass, get something good going there. And then we'll kind of bring in everything along with the drums and see how it all blends together. All right, here's the bass dry. Now this was a Hofner bass, so again, we were very heavily inspired by the Beatles. All right, let's insert the compressor here and get a cool bass tone. I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope this lets you know if the RS-124 is a piece of gear that you might like to check out. I've shared my feelings on it. I've been very open about my love for this compressor for a lot of years. So I'm so happy to be able to finally review it and share what has been one of the most influential pieces that I've used, whether it be software or hardware. So if you like this video, check out the channel. There's other examples where I compare the hardware to some of the modern plugin options from Waves and Acoustica. There's also a shootout of that original plugin against some of the more current plugins that are available. So if you love the RS-124 as much as I do, just take a look around the channel and you'll find more content that you'll probably enjoy. All right, thank you for your time, guys. I appreciate all the support. The channel's been growing rapidly and I can't thank you guys enough. And with your continued support, I'm going to keep putting up content and I really appreciate it, guys. All right, take care. I'll see you again soon. If this is love.